Your Coca-Cola bottler presents Claudia, based on the play and novels by Rose Franken. Brought to you, transcribed, Monday through Friday, by your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. Relax, and while you're listening, refresh yourself. Have a Coke. And now, Claudia. You want an extra blanket tonight, David? Doesn't seem that cold to me. Shouldn't even be that cold. It's the middle of March, isn't it? Just right square, plunk in the middle. Oh, I can't wait to get into bed and pull the comforter up tight. Open the window wide. Get way under the covers, darling. I am. Mm, so comfortable and warm. I'll never get up. David, you give Bluff a bowl of water. I did. That's good. Say, it is cold out. Hope it's warm in the kitchen or Shakespeare will catch cold. Night, darling. Night, dear. Bring the light out? Right away. I don't mind if you read. It's very sweet of you, but no thanks. Not tonight. Mm, bed feels good. Mm. Well, there goes the light. Sweet dreams, darling. You too. Didn't realize it was a little tired. Mm, I bet it's beautiful out in the farm tonight. Mm-hmm. Maybe there's still even a little snow? Maybe. I love snow in the country where it doesn't get slushy. It's not nice when it's slushy. Moon must be pretty on the farm. I think I really like going to sleep on the farm. Won't you, David? Oh, sure, sure, sure. Love it. I'll wind the clock. Well, good night, darling. Good night. See you tomorrow. David, do you hear that? What? I think it's Shakespeare scratching at the door. Oh, well. David, darling, do you hear that? It's Shakespeare scratching at the door, I'm sure it is. David, you want me to get up and see? Oh. You're right, I won't bother. All right, darling, go back to sleep. I guess Shakespeare felt lonesome out there and he wanted to be in here with us. I don't blame him. Or maybe it was my imagination. I thought I heard him before, too, but I guess I didn't. Are you asleep, darling? Sound. Oh, then I won't wake you. Good. I'm not the least bit sleepy anymore, not the least bit. It's funny, why do you suppose... David, why do you suppose I'm not sleepy? Maybe it's because I'm hungry. Do you think I'm hungry? I'm not sure I'm hungry, but I, I, I think I'd like something to eat. David, you're not really asleep. You're just pretending, I know... You're not fooling me. You're not asleep because I can hear you breathe. All right, go on. Ignore me. I'm getting up. I've just decided I'm starving. Oh, no. Oh, here are my slippers. Oh, my bathrobe. Here we are. Well, David, goodbye. Sweet dreams. Light. Oh, oh it's so bright. Shakespeare, you really are asleep. Hey, maybe David was, too. Oh, I hope we have something good in the icebox. I'm getting hungrier every minute. Good uh, eating, Mrs. Norton? David, you are awake. I find that in the midst of tumult and confusion, excursion and alarm, <laughs> I tend to wake up. How nice of you to come in. I simply hate eating alone. How does that cheese look to you? Mm, terrible. Really? That's how it's supposed to look. I don't think it's cheese I want, so... Mm, that's a relief. You want a little cold chicken? No, I do not. White's nice and white. I'll put it out on the table. Maybe I'll have a little wing or something. Oh, I feel so wonderful and so wide awake. <laughs> Must be early because I'm always sleepy when it's late. <laughs> you look sleepy. At least your hair does. It does. <laughs> I must look a mess. Your hair looks sleepy, too. Oh, we've half a grapefruit. That looks wonderful, doesn't it? Really? I'll put it on the table, too. Well, Mrs. Norton, good appetite to you. Hey, David, where are you going? Back to bed. Oh, you can't. It's so much nicer together. Oh, all right, darling. Eat up. I'm sleepy. Here's some peanut butter. I wonder if what I really want is a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Darling, why don't you just get in the ice box? It might be easier. <laughs> 
that I just can't seem to make up my mind. You know, everything looks different in the middle of the night. I know I want something. Maybe but... I can help. Uh, how about uh, pickle? Nope. Glass nope. of tomato juice. Nope. A lovely bacon and lettuce sandwich with mayonnaise all over it. Huh? Mm, nope. No? Oh, David, if only you could find what it is I have a yen Let for. Let me see. Uh, an olive. I don't... No. A glass of water. No, of course not. A glass of what? glass of water. It's not a bad idea. A glass of anticlimax. Coming up. <laughs> I'll get it. <laughs> David, tell me about a mortgage. Uh, now? What better time? Any time is better than now. I don't see why you won't ever tell me. You've been putting it off for months and months and months. Darling, I'll tell you about a mortgage when the baby's born. That, that'll that be my present. Here. I don't want to wait that long. David, if I'm going to live under a roof with a mortgage on it, the least I can do is to know what's hanging over my head. Darling, did you wake me up for this? Last thing I remember, you were sleepy. Look, look, it's late. It's early. And no one's going to interrupt us. This is a perfect time. Only people awake in this whole house are you and me. <laughs> Please, tell me. <laughs> then turn the water off. Who left it running? You did. I did. Why? When? Just now. You were thirsty. Don't be silly. I'm not thirsty. I'm hungry. I'm starving. I'm going to eat something while you explain. David, have we gotten the mortgage yet? I'm getting it now. From who? From the bank. From the bank? Mm Mm-hmm. The same one who gave us our checkbook? That's the one. Mm. You're not eating anything. Oh, I'm deciding between an olive and a pickle. Oh. You know, what I can't understand is, why should the bank want to give us a mortgage. What you don't understand, my love, is everything. Well, why should the bank? The bank is not giving us anything. But you just said... A mortgage is a loan. Like I lend you five cents? Like. But with a bank, I pay interest on a loan at the current rate. Well, if you're going to have to keep on paying interest forever, I don't see how you're ever going to be able to pile up enough money to pay the loan back. I don't have to pay the loan back, darling, as as long as I can afford to keep paying the interest. And as long as I keep the house. I don't like owing people money. I pay up the grocer as soon as... I know. I don't like it either. I wish I had the cash to buy the house free and clear, but since I haven't, I'll take the loan, give the bank the house as collateral... Give the bank the house? I thought we were buying it for us. Well, I, I didn't mean it that way. The house, you see, it is proof to the bank that we own something which is equal value to the loan. Our house is worth a lot more than just any old loan, no matter how big a one. Uh, To us it is, darling. But to the bank, the value of the house is a very positive and financial one. I don't think I like banks. David, what happens if we can't afford to pay the interest on the loan? I hope that day never comes, but if it should, we... Could borrow some more money on the house. Our mortgage isn't for the entire value. Oh. Besides, mortgages are a help when you're thinking of selling. The buyer just takes over. Oh. Well, the main thing I can see that's an advantage about buying a house is that you don't have to pay rent the rest of your life. But in a way, you do. There's the interest on the mortgage, and we'll still be paying rent. That is the most exotic thing I've ever heard. Paying rent for ourselves when we own the place? Claudia, darling, now now try to get this through your head. Yes, you have I to try. figure what your money would earn for you if you were invested in uh, other ways. What other ways? Well, good stocks. Mm. And end up with gallbladder trouble like Hartley? Now, Hartley's no criterion. The market's his business. He takes chances because he's got a lot of money to fool around with. That's exactly what I mean. It's all right if it's your business. But ordinary people just can't afford to have money these days. I don't get it. As soon as we buy a stock, it'd go down. Then we buy some more because it was cheap, and then it would go down still further. It's been known to happen. It's bound to happen. It's far better to have a house than money. So you can't count interest that you wouldn't get as rent. Theoretically, you have to. Who makes you? Nobody makes you. Well, if nobody makes you, why do it? All right, Al. You win. Now eat that pickle and let's go to bed. And I'd still much rather not have a mortgage. There's no point in discussing it anymore now. And you'd much rather not, too. I know, I know. (laughs) darling, my angel, you haven't eaten a thing, not even an olive. Haven't I? No. I'm not hungry after all. I guess I didn't have a yen for anything to eat in the first place. You mean you got me up with... I think I'll have a little slice of that chicken just to make it worthwhile. But, David, it was worthwhile. At least now I understand all about mortgages. Oh, you do, huh? It's just like... 
My giving you five cents. Mm -hmm. Then the house is mine. Even though you think it's yours, because you're paying rent that doesn't exist to yourself, that's what a mortgage is. As long as you think so, darling, that's fine. Mm. Mm. This chicken's pretty good. David, do you think it's possible that the yen I had was to understand about mortgages? Then you're still very hungry. Oh, you. wonder what time it is. Early. Uh, I guess I'll spread a little peanut butter on a cracker. David, honestly, I don't see how you can eat at this hour of the night. I'm starving. Explaining to you about a mortgage gave me an appetite. Yeah, now, where is it? What did you do with the peanut butter? Oh, here it is. Well, I guess I'll go to bed. Be right with you. Funny how much better everything tastes at four o'clock in the morning. Four o'clock in the morning? Oh, no, it can't be. Well, just take a look right here at my watch, and you'll see that it is just exactly, precisely 4 a.m. in the morning. It is. I can't believe it. I thought I'd hardly slept. How'd it get to be... David, why didn't you tell me it was four? Me tell you. Look, darling, you were hungry, and, 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 and I wasn't hungry at all. I was there, ready to go to bed, but I wasn't sleepy. You were sleepy, well, and you get up. no wonder I had many appetites. Well, at this hour of the night, I'm so exhausted, I can hardly even keep awake, let alone be hungry enough to, to want to be thinking about food. Oh, David, hey, come on, let's go to bed. It's so nice being up in the middle of the night with you and the mortgage. Every youngster likes to feel that his friends are welcome in his home. And nothing says welcome faster than plenty of delicious Coke on ice. Fortunately, there's more Coke to be had now, so you can buy it by the carton or the case and let your teenagers offer their chums the hospitality you offer your guests. Ice cold Coca-Cola... For the pause that refreshes. Well, Joe, I did pretty well on that mortgage business, didn't I? You think Claudia understood what I was telling her? I think she thought she understood, and that's all that's important. <laughs> I guess so. Well, did you finally have a good snack, David? There's nothing like a midnight snack. Yeah, fine, thanks. A glass of milk and a ham sandwich. And just think, Joe. On the farm, it'll be our own milk and our own ham. Mm. Provided you redo that barn. Has uh, Claudia agreed to it? Oh, don't remind me. We're going up to the farm tomorrow. I've got to go into the matter of redoing the barn with Claudia, and it's not going to be made any easier by Julia and Hartley, either. They're coming up tomorrow to get their first look at the farm. Well, so long, Joe. So long, David. Well, as I was about to say, every day, Monday through Friday, Claudia comes to you, transcribed, with the best wishes of your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. So listen again tomorrow at the same time. And now this is Joe King saying au revoir. And remember, whoever you are, whatever you do, wherever you may be, when you think of refreshment, think of Coca-Cola. For ice-cold Coca-Cola makes any pause. The pause that refreshes. These broadcasts are adapted for radio by Manya and Roger Starr. And the entire production is supervised and directed by William Brown Maloney. And now, here's a word from your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. <laughs>